Welcome. Let's go. Dave, good to see you. Hey, Sam, you can talk to him later. Not to call you out, but uh, anyway. Uh, welcome. Thanks for uh, staying for the meeting or attending the meeting. We appreciate it. Uh, we are God's family, and uh, so we look forward to doing his business. Uh, let's just take a moment and pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to live as your people, to serve you, to glorify you, uh, to walk in a manner that is worthy of the calling that you've given us as your children. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would do your business, that we would honor you, and that we would honor each other in respecting and treating those as we would our own Savior. Help us to honor you and to, to the business that we're here to do, that it would glorify you in all ways. In Christ's name, amen. All right, uh, one of my favorite times is the determination of a quorum. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started uh, on that. I think last time we started on this side. Uh, but I think we're going to start on this side. We'll just see how that works out. So, Ryan, I'm going I'm to even give you the number one. Wow. One. So, Yes, 25 is the number. Good. So now I'd like to get a motion to convene uh, the meeting. Can I get it seconded? All right. All in favor of convening our meeting? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. All right. So uh, we're going to have uh, Mike come up and do the reading uh, of the approval, or at least the reading of the minutes from the December 20th meeting. So, Mike, if you'd like to come up and do that. Okay, following is a reading of the minutes of the December 6th, 2020 annual business meeting. Jim uh, Hallworth opened in prayer and welcomed members to the meeting. There was a determination of a quorum, uh, 25 was required, 34 were counted. There was a motion to convene the meeting which was seconded and all were in favor. The minutes of the uh, July 26th, 2020 semi-annual business meeting were read and approved. Then we had the reports by the ministry leaders. First up was the financial report read by Shelley Koval, Treasurer Shelley Koval. Uh, we are in an eventful year. <laughs> this was 2020, or, or yeah. Uh, the, the reading of the minutes of last summer. Um, we are at about 93% of budget for the year. Financial statements are reconciled and balanced. 
Um, we are still transitioning to a new financial, some new financial tools with a learning curve. Uh, credit cards and missionaries are paid fully up to date at this time. Next up was the missions report provided by Joe Wright. Uh, there was made available a list of supported missionaries and what they do. Joe uh, also verbally summarized each missionary as well. We then had a report by our worship leader, Michael Fowler. Uh, I am so thankful to be with this church. Uh, Michael acknowledged the contributions of Gene, Carl, Bert, and Lennox. Uh, we meet to practice every Thursday. Um, we have a new keyboard uh, for the sound system, and Casey and Mike Jones have been terrific. Next up was associate pastor at this time, Dr. Ryan Tafalowski. Um, we carry on in, a, in lieu of the pandemic. Mike Jones has spearheaded the streaming of our services online. And a vision for 2021 was mentioned, including events. We then had a brief report by lead pastor Edmund Tafalowski. Uh, we are grateful to so many people. Our finances are, are sound. We have great leadership. And Jeannie and I are at peace, our shalom, with the transition we're going through. Uh, this concluded the ministry reports. Uh, Moderator Jim Hallworth then made a motion to elevate Ryan into the lead pastor position, all approved. There was then a presentation of the 2021 budget by Pastor Ed. He filled in for Tom Dudley, who was out due to uh, COVID protocols, and this budget was accepted. Mike Jones presented a nomination of 2020 officers all were approved there was not any old business needed to be uh, addressed uh, regarding new business Jean requested prayer for our new members particularly the young families finally jim made a motion to adjourn which was seconded we then closed in prayer and were dismissed so be the minutes So a little change up, uh, Shelly was not able to be here, so Tom, you're going to come up and do the treasurer report. So would you like to come up and give us the treasurer's report? And then Barry, after that. Well, we'll see. <laughs> okay, yes, uh, Shelly's out of town today, so she asked me to read her uh, uh, San Miandro report. Uh, and the first part is that our... Uh, giving through May, uh, we are at 91% of our budget. That's a bit of a drop off. We actually were 95% through April. So uh, uh, we were a little bit off in May and that dropped us down to 91%. Just to uh, extrapolate that out, right now we're about $8,000 year to date short on our uh, uh, giving budget and if that were to continue uh, through the end of the year which we pray it doesn't but if it did we would be twenty thousand dollars short so um, just something to, to keep in mind and and uh, and mull over and ponder uh, as far as our assets we have a forty six thousand uh, dollar CD uh, that rolled over again this month, so 
the interest rate not great, but it's better than in an account in a uh, checking account. And then we also have a money market uh, fund, and I believe there's around 15,000 in that. That's not in Shelley's report. Uh, Shelley reports, as we've been doing for some time now, we don't carry a balance on our credit card. We pay that off every month. Uh, we're also current on all of our financial obligations, and um, all of our missionaries have been paid through the first quarter. And again, as an aside, at the end of June, we'll make those payments. So at, before the end of every quarter, we are caught up on all of our uh, mission missionary payments. So that's kind of a uh, short and sweet report from Shelley, and uh, uh, she did ask me to make available, and I have a few if we need more, I'll print them, uh, of the year-to-date uh, profit and uh, loss statement uh, that I'll leave up here in the front. So that's what Shelley and I have. Um, this is the uh, audit committee report regarding the 2020 uh, financial statements. Uh, the audit committee member Barry Mathias and elder board member Doug Alford uh, met uh, with Treasury uh, Shelley Coble on May 28th of this year. We reviewed the year-end year 2020 financial statements and in our opinion the 2020 profit and loss statement was accurate. To reach this conclusion we reviewed the statement and the 2020 general ledger. We found that the accounting maintained in the general ledger was comprehensive and provided a clear record of transactions. We tested several, several account balances from the uh, general ledger for accuracy and found that the balances were properly reconciled to the year-end profit and loss statements. Um, we also reviewed the 2020 balance sheet and noted that the net income reported was consistent with the net income reported on the profit and loss statement. We confirmed that the checking balance and money market balance on the balance sheet were consistent with the year-end um, balance in the general ledger. We noted that the only liabilities uh, were the accrued pay payroll and the mortgage on the church house as of December 31st of 2020. We confirmed that the mortgage balance on the balance sheet was consistent with the mortgage balance on the bank statement provided by the treasurer. We also uh, discussed various treasurer functions and we confirmed with the treasurer that all payroll uh, taxes and returns for state and federal were current. We noted that the bills were being paid electronically by phone and by uh, check and automatic withdrawal. Uh, re re <clears throat> we reviewed the uh, accounting of these uh, methods of payment and found that the record, record keeping was organized, thorough, and accurate. Overall, the, tra tra uh, the audit trail was uh, easily followed, and that was primarily use, uh, primarily because of the use of uh, uh, QuickBooks. Shelley does. Um, anyway, just a big thank you to Shelley uh, for a good job. Any questions? You'll get a letter from the IRS. Just call Barry. He'll, uh, he'll walk with you through that whole. I mean, it might, it might even. Barry, have you been audited by the IRS? <laughs> <laughs> it might be after this meeting. All right, so we're going to have Joe right. Joe, you want to come up and do the missions uh, report? Well, we thank you as a congregation for making it possible that the missionaries are up to date in their payments. Uh, that says something. It says a lot in this time of the pandemic. We uh, have been able to have people here in person to report. Uh, for example, Jim Christy Cummings were here a few weeks ago. And we've also been able to do some digital reporting. You may recall. Uh, I think it was last month that we had uh, Roger and Lynn Schmidt in their project in Mozambique. And I think we'll be using another video report from the Hoyts uh, this month in June. 
And another example of digital connection, uh, the missions team is meeting with Rich Hoyt by Zoom uh, this coming Wednesday night. So we are staying in touch uh, in spite of the COVID restrictions. Uh, for special prayer, I'd just like to, to mention the Cummings. They want to get back to Taiwan, but yuck. The, the visa things, they're having to jump through more bureaucratic hoops than you can imagine. And then Taiwan's having a mini outbreak with COVID. And how that will affect things remains to be seen. So they're in the States now. Uh, their daughter Caroline's getting married in July but just pray for them that they can get back over there and, and do the things that God wants them to do. But again, we thank you for your support of all of our missionaries. Cal Jean. <laughs> Missions Picnic, August 1st, that's a Sunday, and it should be eight weeks from today, I believe, uh, at Lily Gulch, and um, <coughs> Tim Hall and Janet are planning on being with us, and we hope the Hansburgers as well. So August 1st, right after the uh, discipleship hour, and great for good weather and good fellowship. Yeah, I'll give my part in just a second, but first, how many of us are glad that Dave and Linda are back with us this morning? Everybody clap but Mike Pareka. Why is that? There must be a hidden agenda there or something. No, Mike was thrilled to see Dave and Linda this morning. Uh, we're so happy to have you guys back with us. This is wonderful. Praise God. Um, let me mention one thing about finances before I do my little segment. Uh, Barry and Barb came to Foothills through the Billy Graham crusade way back in 87 or 88. Um, and I remember uh, at the end of that crusade, Billy, the Billy Graham people hired a secular Denver audit uh, operation uh, to audit the crusade, not a Christian group, a secular group, so there could be no uh, accusations of cover-ups or where the money's going, that kind of thing. So they hired a, a secular group to audit the crusade, and then they published the results of the audit in the Denver Post. So anybody could see exactly where every penny that came in went from the Billy Graham crusade. That's how much integrity Billy Graham and his group had, and they never had any scandals. Uh, you know, when we know when it comes to money, how many scandals there have been in the Christian world. Uh, and I say all that just to remind us of how grateful we are and blessed we are to have such good people handling the money here at Foothills Fellowship. Chris and Shelley weren't able to be here today, but Chris and Shelley and Barry and Tom and uh, Doug Alford, uh, people who understand figures, money, and uh, who love God, love the church, and work with such a high degree of integrity, uh, it's so, from, from my perspective and now from Ryan's, it's a real blessing when you have good people handling the money uh, in, a, in a church where there's no scandals, no weird stuff going on, everything's above board and handled correctly, um, and we, we steward that money well. So thanks to all you guys uh, for doing that, um, for being such good stewards. A anyway, for my part, uh, obviously I segued out of being the lead guy in uh, uh, as of January 1st, and, and now Pastor Ryan is that. 
And people come up to me all the time, and Jeannie, and say, well, how does it feel to be retired? And uh, I say, well, we're like the rights. We're, like, we're not really retired. We're, we're busy. Uh, actually, uh, there's always lots of ministry going on for us. I've done several memorial services. I've done a wedding. I've done counseling and hospital visitations. And I split time with uh, Pastor Ryan teaching adult uh, teaching the discipleship hour and on those occasions where Ryan oversleeps on a Sunday morning uh, I preach so uh, I keep my hand in it and uh, Jeannie will be uh, restarting her Bible study in the fall and helping with uh, the mops group with Adrian so we're, we keep busy we uh, uh, we're, we don't have as much going on which is kind of nice after 36 years to be able to back off a little bit and do more things together and not have the responsibility but um, ministry is in our blood and that's what we're called to do so we're grateful to to be able to to keep our hand in it so that's really all I needed to tell you does anybody have any questions for us okay Um, you know, I thought I was the lead pastor, but actually yesterday at John Bennett's memorial service, if you were there, the, the program had me listed as the youth pastor. Um, and I knew it was only a matter of time before I was going to be demoted, but I thought I'd make it more than six months. And I thought you guys would tell me, uh, that was a really hard way to find out. Um, so very discouraged, I guess is, uh, is the sum of the report. Uh, no, a lot to say, so I will, I'll try to be timely about this, but I want to make sure I cover my bases. I want to start um, my report by just reading to you Psalm 126. I've been meditating on this psalm a lot in recent weeks. Uh, the psalmist says this, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy, as they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the, in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing seeds for sowing, shall come back with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. I, the reason I've been thinking about this psalm a lot is that uh, this is true of the biblical storyline generally. But you really get it summed up in Psalm 126 in a very specific way that joy and sorrow, joy and pain are so closely bound in the human experience, but they're also very closely bound in the life of the people of God. And I've been thinking about that verse uh, over 2019 and 2020 and now 2021. Been a very, very difficult number of months for us, for the whole world. Um, and we felt it here at Foothills, there's been uh, some things to grieve, some things to celebrate, lots of tears, lots of laughter. Um, but I love the psalm because it ends on such a note of tremendous hope that even though you might be sowing in tears, you're going to reap with joy. And I think that's true. I think that's true for our individual stories. I think that's true for Foothills. So I want to start with gratitude. Um, A theological education prepares you to be a pastor, and it doesn't. There are lots of things that you, you can't learn until you're on the job. I think I knew that in the abstract. I'm learning it in the concrete. Um, we're a small congregation, but it still takes a tremendous amount of work from lots of people to make this thing go. Uh, and so I want to acknowledge the staff. Um, I've been grateful to Ed, to Michael, to Lennox. Um, I am grateful to our volunteers. Now that I work at the church just about every day, it's amazing how many people are here throughout the week making this place go. I am grateful to all of you. I'm grateful to the elder board who have a tremendous amount of wisdom and patience. Uh, 
I am really grateful for you guys. I don't take you for granted, uh, your wisdom and your support. I'm thankful for the tech team who show up and who got our services up and streaming so that a lot of people who can't be with us uh, for embodied worship because of the pandemic are able to join us. I'm grateful, grateful for that. I'm grateful to God for you, his people. I, I, I pray every day thanking God for this place, for this ministry. Uh, I believe that the local, God, the local church is where the living God does his work. It is the place that is full of divine glory. We just have to learn how to look. And I've seen glory here uh, in, in spite of the difficulties. And so in the light of Psalm 126, I'll just start by saying there have been a lot of challenges this year. Um, we've been wishing this pandemic away since spring of last year, right? <laughs> and it hasn't gone away. It's going away. We're, we're starting to see it. I think we're coming out of it. But COVID and its fallout, uh, financial, physical attendance, spiritual fallout, I think is what I'm most concerned about, has been really difficult. Um, you know, Pastor Ed, uh, some, a lot of you will know, never missed a Sunday due to illness in 36 years. I missed my first two. Uh, I got, I got, I got, my first Sunday was January 3rd. I got a positive COVID test on January 2nd. Uh, and I missed the third and I also missed the 10th. Uh, and to make matters worse, Rob Blanks, who did an amazing job filling in for me on the third, also had COVID as did his whole family. So we had a direct exposure to everyone in the church. We had to cancel service on the 10th. I don't know that that's ever happened before. We had a massive snowstorm where we had to cancel our physical gathering. It's been difficult to get momentum. COVID had other ideas, and so we're learning a lot, I think, about patience and tenacity and faithfulness in this season. I think we're grappling now with the transition to the new normal. What kind of church is Foothills on the far side of this thing? I think that's a question that uh, we're struggling to, to think about. We've got a number of key ministry transitions coming up. Um, I won't say more than this because I know that this will make them really uncomfortable, but you should know that Bob and Janie Siemens, who have run our children's church for what, 30 years, more than that, probably. They, I mean, they were running it when I was in there. Um, and if you knew me and my friends at that age, it's amazing they made it through that. And then they did it another 30 years. Um, Janie had to talk me out of having a Baba Palooza, which was a special service uh, focused on Bob. And she said he wouldn't like it. So I did, I, we're not going to do Baba Palooza, but I do want to recognize you two. You. Uh, you are legends in the game. I, I think about how many children have come through your ministry, many of whom are out doing amazing things for the kingdom now. And uh, you've been really formative for that. Um, you have earned your rest, yeah. Um, and all that is to say, Bob and Janie are transitioning out in the coming weeks. Um, and Adrian and I are working with some folks to, to think of a transition plan. Um, so we ask for your patience as we, as we figure out what that will look like. But we are so grateful, really thankful for you two. And um, you'll be missed, your big shoes to fill. Um, and uh, so that's coming up. So we've, we've got some things to think about in our children's ministry. Uh, it's also been a difficult year because we've lost a couple of our dear uh, family members here. Uh, 2021 has seen both the, the passing of Jeffy and John Bennett. Um, we've seen some serious illnesses here. Uh, our brother Dave had a, a, um, a very serious medical in, uh, incident. We're so glad that you're here with us, Dave. So grateful. So that's been hard uh, because we love you, right? And when, when, uh, when God's people are suffering, we feel it. But there's also really exciting developments. I think really new, good signs of new life. I mean, we mean that literally too. I mean, we got to celebrate Morgan and Stephen's wedding in April, which was just such a gift uh, to see new families being formed that way. Uh, you come on the right Sunday, you might find four or five toddlers running around, which is a real gift. We're really grateful for that and very excited about some connections we're making with some new families. Adrian and I have a new a baby coming in August. Uh, we're slowly updating and transforming our physical space and our social media and website presence. Adrian has been really instrumental in that, working really hard. Um, we relaunched our MOPS chapter, it, 
which we are very, very excited about. We had our first event uh, in May, which was very encouraging. We, our next one is coming up on Friday, and then we're going to begin the curriculum more fully in September. We are really hopeful for this, and uh, really covet your prayers. We're launching a new small group, which starts meeting the week after next, so we could be praying that God would bless this ministry, build strong community through it as we bring some families together, which is a big part of our vision for Foothills, is building intense networks of community that, that last over many years. This is one of the great strengths of Foothills, and we want to play to that strength. So we're, we're really excited about that. We cover your prayers. Um, we had a, uh, our first meeting of the Theology Reading Group last month, too. Um, I have a mentor of mine who said that you got to do something as a pastor that gives you life, even if people don't care about it. And I said, I know what people don't care about, dead German theologians, and they give me life, so we're going to do it. So I just threw it out there. Didn't think we'd have any interest at all, to tell you the truth. We probably had, I don't know, 15 or 16 at our first meeting at the Cook's House. We read Dietrich Bonhoeffer's book, Life Together. Our next one's coming up. Really excited about that. I think that God does important formative work when his people get together to talk about important ideas. Uh, and so I, I'm, I'm very hopeful for this next season of the church as we come out of what's been a very difficult season. Uh, so in terms of personal updates, I'll just give you this. Um, the intensity of ministry is something we expected. I grew up in the, in the household of a pastor. Um, but there was really no way to anticipate how intense it would be till we were here. So I'm getting used to that. I know we got a lot of baseball fans. Um, it, out there in the congregation and the best way to sum up uh, stepping into a lead pastoring role that I can think of is like being called up from single A to the majors uh, and then you've got to get in there and it's time to bat uh, and I can't you know I, I strike out a lot I, I'm having trouble adjusting to the speed of the game there's days where I just hope that I can get hit by a pitch so I can get on base um, it's been yeah it's been intense in a good way because uh, the work of the kingdom is intense. And I, I also believe that where God's kingdom is at work, where the, where the spirit is stirring, the evil one uh, wants to stop it. Uh, so we've been feeling that. Adrian has been working really hard. She does uh, a lot of things, uh, managing our communications. She's been uh, helping out with the, the children's ministry transition. She just does a lot, so you could pray for Adrian, especially as we have a second baby coming in August, uh, which, now that I say that out loud, is a, a really frightening thought. We've got about 10 weeks. Uh, it's so different than the first one, right? The first one, you've got like your, the nursery's ready six months in advance. We got a car seat and we had a fireman check it because that's what they tell you to do at the hospital. And it occurred to me the other day, like, oh, we should probably get a car seat at some stage. <laughs> like the baby will need to be in a car seat, I think. Uh, and... I don't know. I, I'm hoping we'll sleep better because you just learn like, oh, they're alive. It's fine. I'll see you in the morning. Uh, so you can pray for spiritual and physical health for us in that season because uh, we're going to be tired. Yeah. Um, mo most of all, uh, I said this at the top. Um, your, a theological education prepares you to be a pastor in lots of important ways, but there's lots of important ways that it doesn't. Uh, you, learn, you learn to read the Bible in its original languages, and you learn the history of Christian thought, and you read philosophy, and you, you learn uh, kind of how to think strategically about ministries and stuff, whatever. Um, but there's lots of stuff. It's like an apprenticeship. Uh, you know, um, I'm so grateful, for instance, that we have an audit committee, and we've got people on the elder board who can do the financials. They do not teach you how to handle money when you're training to be a theologian, which is probably fine because you'll never see any. Um, but in this context, I'm really grateful that we have people who, who handle that stuff so faithfully. Um, but I'm still learning the ropes when it comes to preaching and teaching every week. I like that work. I find it life-giving, but it's, it's taxing. I'm adjusting to it. I'm still learning how to do pastoral care, uh, which comes, I think, in a lot of ways only through experience. And I'm aware that um, I'm a lot younger than a lot of you. So that's, that's a hard dynamic, too. I'm trying to, to practice that, get better at it. Uh, still trying to, to practice the spiritual disciplines well, prayer, study, service. And I'm still trying to, to think about uh, and, and 
operationalize the vision of being the kind of best small church that we can be, which comes with a lot of limitations, but it also comes with a lot of advantages. So I'm really um, wrestling with that stuff now. So I guess I'm just asking for your patience as I learn to be a pastor. And I've been grateful for it, grateful for your support. Um, so there's a lot more I could say. For the sake of time, I'll stop here, though, uh, and address any questions if there are any. Right? Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan. All right, so we're going to have Tom come up and speak about the amendment to the church bylaws. Right, so, Tom, you want to walk through that with us? So we... Uh, we communicated a, a couple, three times about this uh, change, proposed change to our bylaw uh, regarding uh, assets of the church. Yeah, we sent out, well, I, I kind of read through a document a couple of weeks ago, and then we sent out a text and an email recently. Um, I was a bit chagrined a few weeks ago when Pastor Ryan, speaking of pastoral care, uh, publicly mocked me <laughs> because I inferred that, that you all should be carrying around the copy of the Constitution and bylaws so that you can refer to them easily. But there was some truth to his criticism, and so we're actually proposing that we have a little uh, pocket-sized Constitution and bylaw that you'll be able to carry around with you so that nothing will escape you. Uh, we're working on that as we speak. But we do have the uh, ballot uh, ready for uh, voting on this uh, change. Uh, the ballot is a little more wordy uh, than just saying we're going to change it so that in the event of uh, a dissolution caused by a merger, for instance, uh, of the organization, that the assets will be distributed to uh, 5013C. But we're using the, the wording that the uh, uh, lawyer uh, recommended, uh, Sean Pearman, and uh, it's also directly from the IRS guidelines. So it's within the bylaws of, uh, the, within the guidelines of the uh, tax laws and so forth. So uh, we're pass Mike's passing that out as we speak. And so you've had a chance to read the email and, and, uh, and hear us talk about it. Do you have any questions that, that we can help with while we're passing out the ballot? Nothing? Okay. Um, it's simple. Uh, just read through it and just check yes or no, and uh, we'll go from there. And as I mentioned, too, we'll in, um, at our December meeting, we'll have some additional changes to the bylaws, but uh, this is what we had ready for today, so we appreciate your support on that. I think if there's no question, Jim, you do have uh, some, maybe some stand-up? Well, we uh, want to make sure that everybody gets a copy of that. Hopefully everybody gets two. We have pens as well. Does everybody put on a pen? Or
Oh, just a just a quick note. You pass those in, and then Mike will collect those, and then obviously count them, and then come back and just uh, what the results of those were. Um, so we'll just have a few minutes for that. Uh, just real quickly, uh, Dave Cook uh, actually emailed me uh, just a note because he was going to be here and just wanted to share. All right, just real quickly while we're waiting for that. Um, any old business that we need to discuss? Is there any old business that we still have left over? The meeting between December and now, is there anything that we have on that? Okay. Is there any new business that we need to discuss? Anything at all? Bob uh, and Jane, you guys are uh, getting out of the Children's Church. Are you guys uh, any aspirations? 
small, but uh, we'll have that as well. Uh, all right, so can I uh, get a motion to adjourn? Thanks for a second. Go back to sleep, Rich. That's for you.